Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of our Firebase phone authentication journey. In today's video, we're going to be creating the backend for the phone auth UI that we created in our last video. If you haven't watched that part 1 yet, I'll post the link in the description below so you can follow along. What we're going to do here is to create a Firebase project, integrate it into our Flutter app, and build authentication logic. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So here we are at the initial screen of Firebase. Uh, what we need to do here is to click this button to get started. Just like that. And by the way, if you haven't created the account yet, then go ahead and create one. And don't worry because setting up a Firebase account is way more simpler than creating a Firebase account. So there is nothing to worry about. Once that's done, just click on this add project here to create a new Firebase project. So let's go ahead and just enter the name of the uh, project that you want to create. So let's create our project Flutter Chat App Demo. Just like that. And uh, continue. Okay, we have now successfully created our Firebase project. Let's now integrate this into our Flutter app. And to do that, simply click on this little Flutter icon here. And as you can see, Firebase has already given us the instruction on what to do next. So it says here that uh, you have to install the Flutter CLI and install the Flutter SDK and then click on this next button so there if you haven't installed the flutter cli yet then go ahead and install it and activate it using this command but since i already uh, have done that so i'll go straight from copying this command and run it on our flutter app terminal There you go, you can just simply uh, follow the instructions here. So let's hit enter. Okay, our terminal now has finished integrating Firebase into our app. It's pretty cool how easy it is to hook up Firebase to our Flutter app with just a single command. Firebase has done all the heavy lifting for us, unlike in the past when you have to do everything manually, risking numerous errors before successful integration. It's now Breeze. And as you can see, these are all the apps that have been integrated into our Firebase project. However, we do have an error here. This is because we haven't installed the Firebase core yet. So to fix that, Let's go ahead and install Firebase Core. And since we'll be using Firebase Oath, let's also install Firebase Oath. There you go. After installing, the error went away. After setting everything up, we are now ready to use Firebase Oath API into our project. But before writing any code, we need to ask ourselves, how can we architect our authentication to make it robust, maintainable, and scalable? That's what I plan to implement here. However, given the architecture aspect is a whole other ballgame and requires dedicated time to set up, I've decided to cover that in a separate video. This way, we can focus solely on the architecture. So for the time being, Let's just concentrate on using Firebase Auth API to get our phone Auth working. Now here we are at the official Firebase phone Auth documentation. And as you can see, there is an important notice here regarding the use of phone numbers for authentication. If you're only learning how to use Firebase phone Auth for practice, this might not be of immediate concern. However, 
If you're developing a real-world app intended for deployment, it's crucial not to overlook this. This notice indicates that phone numbers used for authentication are sent to and stored by Google. This helps enhance spam and abuse prevention across Google services, not just Firebase. So as a developer, it's our responsibility to inform our users about this and only proceed their phone number sign up once they agreed to it. Typically, this consent is obtained by a clear privacy and policy that users must agree to before signing up. But because what we are building is just for demonstration purposes only, we don't need to implement this. And remember that it's essential to comply with regional data privacy laws. For more information, refer to Firebase official documentation. But I just want to highlight this as a case steps in ethical app development. Now, let's dive into integrating Firebase phone out with our Flutter app. So here are the steps for implementing phone out. For Android, it says here that we have to set our SHA-1 hash in Firebase console. To find your SHA-1, you need to cd to your Android directory and run this command. So let's go ahead and do that. After all that, let's head back to our docs and see how to code this thing up. And as you can see, the docs are pretty straightforward. We can just simply copy this method here and call it into our own press function. So let's copy it. And down here, once the SMS code has been verified, we can just simply call this sign in with credential method. And if you want to dig deeper into how this API works, you can just hang out here in the docs and read all this stuff. It's clear and easy to get your head around, so don't worry. So let's go ahead and implement all of this.
So we're done with the coding. To make sure we're on the same page, let me run through the flow. Here we've got our sign in with phone number button. This is the single button we've been reusing, both to verify the phone number and the OTP code. So up here, I've set it to check if the phone type is phone number. If it is, it calls this verify phone number function. If our phone type is OTP, then it's all about calling this verify OTP code function. So let's see what this verify phone number is doing. Here, we're using the verify phone number of Firebase Oak. If something goes wrong, the verification field function jumps into action and will display an alert dialog with the error. If the phone number is verified and an SMS code is sent to the phone number, this code sent function steps up. And what we're doing here in the code sent is saving this verification ID to a variable that we've defined down here using a use state. And once we've got the verification ID safely stored, we've updated our sign-in form type. This allows the user to enter the SMS code they've just received. When the user enters the OTP code, that's when we call the verify OTP code function. What's happening here is that we're following the official docs instructions and calling this sign-in with credential. And we're passing this phone with credential which contains both the verification ID from this code sent function and the OTP code entered by the user. If the OTP code checks out and there is no error, we're navigating the user to the home screen. But if there's an error, we show an alert dialog with the details of the problem. I hope that gives you a clear picture of the whole flow. If there's anything that's not quite clear, Feel free to drop a question in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to help clarify it. Now, let's run our app and put our logic to test. But before that, we need to go to Firebase console and activate Firebase phone note. And at the same time, let's create a test phone number. So here, let's try the test phone number that we have created. So as you can see guys, our error handling here is working. This is showing the error as expected. But why are we getting this error? Let me try to troubleshoot this. Oh, so we haven't passed the correct phone number here. There you go. Let's refresh this and let's try it more, one more time. There you go. It's look like it looks like it's working. There you go. And let's go ahead and look at our Firebase backend if there is a user created. There you go. As you can see, there is one user created. So meaning 
the phone authentication that we have created is now working correctly so there you have it guys i hope you've enjoyed and learned from this video in our next video we'll be diving into refactoring and architecting our phone authentication logic we're going to make our code more maintainable scalable and testable if that sounds interesting to you then go ahead and smash that like button share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel